Hey everybody, I'm Sean Evans with the Chatham County Public Information Office. Thank you so much for joining us for this installment of the Chatham County Chat. Today we have a very special edition. We're here inside the Front Porch, a multi-agency resource center in the city of Savannah, also in Chatham County. And we have two guests with us here today. Judge Lisa Colbert, she's Superior Court Judge and founding member of the Front Porch. Thank you so much for being here with us. And we also have Judge Roxanne Formey, Juvenile Court Judge and Vice President of the Interagency Oversight Group. That's a mouthful. We're going to try to fit that all in the lower third for you. I also have my co-host, the director of the communications office for the uh, for the county, Catherine Glasby. Thank you, My Sean. boss. <laughs> we'll, we'll just forget about that part okay. while we're here. Okay, very good. Well, we want to jump right into it. Judge Colbert, uh, as a founding member, what was the motivation in developing the front porch? Oh, wow. Well, um, motivation was seeing young people come to juvenile court mm -hmm. for issues that pre-existed the incident that led them to juvenile court mm -hmm. that were not addressed, that could have been addressed outside of court. Yeah. So um, we started looking at ways of making that happen. So a child shouldn't have to get in trouble to get what they needed, whether it was an IEP or mental health services or right. housing or food. Right, a preemptive move. Or, or yeah, right, exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. So it actually is a community risk reduction program by statute mm -hmm. that could only be started by the juvenile court judges by court order to allow for information sharing in an assessment center such as this so that root cause mm -hmm. you know, could be determined and interventions put in place. Okay, very so good. we were very motivated. Very good, very good. Well, uh, Judge Formey, how did you become involved with the Front Porch? Through Judge Colbert, actually. <laughs> um, we go. When I uh, was sitting in juvenile court as a pro tem judge, Judge Colbert, um, started to educate me about what the front porch was doing, invited me to the programming, and um, just began to help me understand the importance of this program in our community and how it was going to help our kids and families stay out of the justice system and stay out of some of the systems that they've been trapped in. So that's how I came to know about the front porch. Excellent. Judge Colbert, when 11 agencies signed an MOU, and that's government speak for Memorandum of Understanding, right. in 2018, how important was that collective effort to the success of the program, and what does that success really mean to you? Oh, wow. So that was extremely important because, as you can see, this, um, this effort is resource-rich or mm -hmm. intense. Uh, you had to have personnel. You had to have a building. Um, and so most of the personnel here, pretty much all of them except for two, are borrowed from other mm -hmm. agencies. Um, so that was important because there wasn't enough funding to just staff the building sure. otherwise. The building itself is a collaboration between the city of Savannah and Chatham County. Mm -hmm. The city of Savannah provides the space, Chatham County provides the operating costs. The other very important thing about that collaboration is that one of the other issues that impeded children's success that led to them and their families coming to juvenile court are the silos. So there was information known about these children and families, but the agencies don't talk to each other in right. a way that made sense for the children and families. So defects would know something about a child and family before they got to court. They get to court for another reason. We don't know what defects knows. Uh, defects doesn't know what we know. And so opportunities were missed. So having agencies such as defects, the school system who has a wealth of information about children, mm -hmm. um, them signing on, Mm -hmm. made all the difference in the world because by that um, statute that I talked about, it allows for agencies who normally have to keep that information private, once they sign that MOU, they can now share that information with the other agencies in the building. So hopefully the silos will no longer impede those children who come here from getting the help that they need. Yeah, it sounds like the collaboration is the key. It's, it's, it's everything. <laughs> yeah, that. this 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 center won't work without those collaborations. Won't work as it should right. without those collaborations. Right, because people don't walk in the door and just start telling you everything about them. I don't blame them. They don't trust sure. systems, so mm -hmm. you know, fear that their children are going to be taken away. Absolutely, or something worse is going to happen. So mm -hmm. if the information is known, and then we have you know a way of gently saying, we realize you need help with this. You know, maybe right. we can help you. And that's what it's all right. about. It's it's about the help. Exactly. So my next question is for you, and it's the IOG is the policy making arm of this organization. What does it mean for those watching? What is the IOG? Explain that to me. 
So there's the front porch and then there's the governing body um, over the front porch and that is where all of the stakeholders, all the collaborators come, collaborators come together to decide what's going to happen with the agency to talk about what's been going on with the agency, um, talk about where we need to, to grow, where we're doing things well, um, and to really just guide the, the agency uh, generally. And so when we talk about policy, we want to talk about what things can we do to enhance people's experience when they come here. Uh, what kinds of things can be done to make sure that the community continues to know about what we do? What kinds of things can we uh, talk about to make sure that we are getting the right data, to make sure we're using that data in a productive way, um, in a way that's actually going to help people and help us move the city and community forward? So mm -hmm. the governing body uh, sort of directs that mm -hmm. process. All right, very good. Well, Judge Colbert, so more than 1,100 Chatham County families have been impacted by the front porch since its inception, 300 last year alone. That's a massive number. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel, though, that there's a need to reach more, and what can be done to do so? Oh, absolutely. So what we're hoping, um, as you heard Judge Formey mention the data, mm -hmm. so ideally what we're, we're looking to do as juvenile court continues to get referrals, mm -hmm. as they have been, um, look to see where those kids and families are coming from and see if we need to do more outreach you know, in those actual communities because anyone can refer a child or a child and family can walk in mm -hmm. to the front porch. Um, oftentimes, people don't go where they don't know you know, there's help. So we should be continuing to see where kids are coming from in juvenile court, where kids who are having the most problems in school, mm -hmm. where the police are encountering young people um, in places or in situations where they shouldn't encounter them, but they're not being charged because they may not have done anything to warrant charges, but it's concerning. Mm -hmm. So as we learn more about what's happening with young people, some of those missed opportunities I talked about, yeah. the key is targeting outreach to engage those families and kids so let them know um, about the program and what the front porch can help them with. Right, right. You all are what we call in the business walking sound bites. Thank you exactly. so much. That's very good. Uh, Judge for me, I do want to ask you, um, as a, a change agent, what have you been able to accomplish when it comes to disenfranchised youth in the county? Oh, well. <laughs> um, I think that I've been able to help uh, others put a spotlight on where the needs are and then create help to create pathways to address those needs. Um, I think it's important that everyone uh, can come together and talk about how uh, the issues we face overlap and then be able to come up with solutions to affect that. Um, we do that through the juvenile court, we do that through um, the front porch, we do that um, just as a community we all come together to, to figure it out. So by no means are, you know, Judge Colbert and I unicorns. We have a lot of people in our community who come together to be change agents and to, to come up with solutions that, that will impact our, our families. Very good. Judge Colbert, when I first met you, you were over at Juvenile Court. Now you're over at Superior Court. What What is your vision for the front porch? Because you remained involved even though you went to Superior Court. Wow. Um, so my vision is that, you know, it would be something that young people, their families will think about, you know, when things start going off the rails. Because as a parent of three of my own, they're now grown. Thank God. Um, <laughs> you know, things can go off the rails at, at the turn of a dime. You just sure. don't know whether it's mental health, whether it's, you know, some type of school phobia, just anything can happen. Housing, um, you know, the world is tough. So what I'm hoping is that people will know about this because oftentimes parents don't know where to go mm -hmm. for help, you know, when their child is, I mean, you know if they're sick, you just take them to the doctor or the hospital, but when things just aren't right and you can't figure out, like, why your child all of a sudden doesn't want to go to school or mm -hmm. they're behaving in a way that's concerning, you know something's going on. Um, so I'm hoping that it'll be a household name, just like people know to go to the grocery store or mm -hmm. they know to go to the mall when they want to get some new shoes. So I'm hoping that the awareness is there. I'm hoping that the front porch will be um, just a regular line item on mm -hmm. the county and the city's budget and the school system's budget. Um, because I think all of those agencies, and when I say cities, not just Savannah, all eight municipalities, mm -hmm. um, because when you look at police time, when you look at 
um, just community of life or, or quality of life issues, if children aren't doing well, the community is not doing well. Right. And it's usually the first part. The, 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 the community is not doing well. The children, it's going to show with your children. Sure. You know, I always say the most vulnerable, children and old people, like right. the ones who need help. Um, the most. If they're not doing well, then the community isn't doing well because we should protect those who, who need to be protected. So I'm hoping that the front porch will be a regular part of that solution and always a part of the conversation. Yeah, I, a couple of the parents that work with us have often said that their kids did not come with a manual. Oh no. And <laughs> that I think something like this helps to fill that gap Absolutely. of that manual. Absolutely. Uh, it's amazing work that you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And the other part about the IOG, I just want to say, one of the beautiful things about that in terms of silos, we normally don't see a space where you've got a school superintendent, oftentimes a police chief or the second uh -huh. in charge, um, DFACS director, um, judges, and mental health people, community leaders. Uh, and heads of agencies coming together and having a conversation right. about children and families. Like right. it's just an amazing thing. Usually when we used to come together before the front porch, we it wasn't nice. It's a lot of finger pointing. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You're not doing this and your agency isn't doing this. So sure. we don't do that. We have conversations, what are the gaps? And then how can we jump in wherever we are, our agencies, um, our talents, personal talents even, how can we come in and be a part of the solution instead of finger pointing at and each other? I think that's it right there, the solution. Oh, yeah. I've been in government for 19 years, and it's not often mm -hmm. that you see that. You don't no. see that kind of solution, no. so it's nice to see. Absolutely. But I, I'm, thank you for bringing up the IOG again, because I, I do have a little bit more questions no about question. the IOG. Okay. So I kind of understand what it is as the, the governing body, but tell me your experience as kind of directing that. What, what do you see as where you want the IOG to go? So, uh, with all transparency, I'm new to the position. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, directing it is, is something that's new, but I've watched um, people like Judge Colbert um, and others uh, be in that director position. Um, and I think what I would like to continue is to do exactly what Judge Colbert's been talking about, making sure that people see the front porch as the grocery store. It's just on their list of things to think about mm -hmm. when they're moving through their day. Sure. Um, I think it's really important to continue to um, to make sure that we we work together. That collaborative is so incredibly important to keep those relationships um, strong, uh, to bring in new people who can help us grow mm -hmm. the organization and to also reach out to you know there are some other multi-agency resource centers around the country and to talk to them about what they're doing to continue to to uh, put best practices in place um, and I think that the the staff here has, does a tremendous job um, at with working with the families that come in here so just supporting them and trying to help them accomplish their goals for the program um, and just you know, continue to, to be growth-minded and, um, and work with everybody. Well, and Judge Formey, speaking of other multi-agency resource centers sure. around the country, <laughs> there's a map right above you there uh, that shows where the front porch is, and we're kind of on a little island down here mm -hmm. uh, compared to the rest of the country, so definitely a, a needed um, and well-loved resource that we can tell so far. Um, I do, just getting close to wrapping it up here, want to ask you, Judge Formey, what initiatives or um, things would you like to see happen to be able to reach more um, uh, of folks out in the community? I really would like to see, and this is something that we're working on, is in, improving our, our data collection, mm -hmm. um, improving our um, outreach to areas that haven't traditionally been touched or um, are not um, fully served, mm -hmm. and identifying what those specific needs are. And so every community has their own needs, uh, every family has their own needs, and really trying to you know, really identify that and expand um, the work that we do around the, the actual night need, and not what we assume the need to be, right. but what the actual needs are. Um, I'm not sure that fully answered your question. Data-driven <laughs> initiatives. No, we hear about that quite yeah. often, um, and that's the, the most effective way to hit everyone and, and their needs and, and make sure that we're fulfilling those. Well, judges, uh, wrapping it up here, anything else you all would like to add that we haven't touched on here today? Um, well, just in closing, I, I would just like to say, you know, when I was at juvenile court, I often thought about um, 
the court being like the hospital comparing it, you know, mm -hmm. to to health needs, mm -hmm. um, and and we were like the only game in town for children. Well, for parents and children who didn't have resources, mm -hmm. um, you so you've had a lot of parents filing complaints against their own children mm -hmm. because of mm -hmm. being ungovernable or yeah. you know at home. Um, this is more like the doctor's office, you know? Mm -hmm. So you wanna not use resources at the hospital for people who aren't very sick because when they come mm -hmm. in, they usually get sicker yeah. because they're exposed to sicker people and mm -hmm. the resources are diluted for those who really need to be there. Mm -hmm. Same thing when you compare why this is here as opposed to children and families going to the court. They should be at the court if they're high risk yeah. and need stuff because all kids need stuff. But if they're not high risk, not posing a danger to the community at that time, um, and they need something that they're not getting, then this is where they should be. So that's why this has been so important to me because I saw as a judge that I, when I had too many cases and trying to make sure every child that I had got what they needed, we were diluting resources, both judicial time, staff time at the court because we were spreading ourselves way too thin trying to make sure every child that came through those doors got what they needed. Now there's an opportunity because even the court refers kids here. Mm -hmm. to say they don't need to be here, right. but they need something. So let's get them out of the court. Mm -hmm. And so we can focus, the court can focus on mm -hmm. who they need to focus on and the front porch can help those who don't need to be there. What a great analogy. Yeah, yeah. I usually use food analogies about today. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> do better. Uh, I can appreciate that. <laughs> Judge Foreman, anything else you'd like to add? Um, I think I'd just add that you know we're all one community and it takes a community to fix community problems. And this effort is the start to that. And I think, you know, as we continue to work together, um, we can build communities through intervention, through support, uh, through providing mechanisms like the front porch uh, to make us move forward. Very good. Well, thank you both so yes. much. Fantastic guests had a lot of great points to make there. Thank you again for your time. On behalf of myself, uh, Catherine Glasby, Judge Roxanne Formey, and Judge Lisa Colbert, this is the latest edition of The Chat. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have part two from the front porch just ahead.